Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com, here to do your weekly intuitive reading for Monday, January 24th through Sunday, January 30th, 2022. Can you believe we're at the end of the first month of the year already? For this week's weekly reading, we're going to be using the Psychic Tarot by John Holland. That'll be the main message for everyone, for the collective. And then your special message card this week, depending on your stone of choice, is going to be coming from the Archangel deck by Radley Valentine. So if you haven't already, watch the monthly intuitive reading for January. And we are at the end of the month now, so you might want to pop onto my YouTube channel and watch that monthly intuitive reading with the energies of the month, the astrological transits of significance. We've got some interesting things coming up this week. And then messages for the collective as well as a special message based on your stone of choice for that. And because we are nearing the month of February, really soon we'll be having the February intuitive monthly reading up on my YouTube channel. So be sure to be on the lookout for that as well. So let's go ahead and start by taking a look at what our stones of choice are for this week. So our first stone of choice and yes, they are special intention pendants. Okay, so our first special intention pendant is, this is golden yellow and green moss agate. Isn't that just beautiful? It's got like half yellow and half green there. This is actually wrapped in gold wire and it's Reiki charged with the energy of the number three, the number of abundance, prosperity, and blessings. And it's infused also with the energy of the number eight, the number of confidence, courage, and willpower. It has infused into this the energies of Taurus, the sign that rules money and manifestation. The planet Jupiter, which is the planet of positivity, expansion, and magnification of one's intentions and the energies of Ganesh to remove obstacles and maintain balance, along with goddess Lakshmi, who often uh, works with Ganesh, for her power and wealth and goddess Abundantia as well. We got a whole slew of them here with this one. Goddess Abundantia for increased good fortune and success. Wonderful. All right. Our second special intention stone of choice this lovely abalone shell, nice little delicate abalone shell. This is wrapped in silver and it's Reiki charged with the vibration of the number 11, master number 11, number of the light worker and the visionary and the number that brings balance and heightens connection to our psychic senses. Okay. It also has infused into it the energies of Neptune, planet that brings a connection to the waters of the ocean for heightened creativity, fluidity, and imagination, activation of the crown, third eye, and heart chakras for opening to higher awareness, increased intuition, and opening oneself to unconditional love. And then this one has the guidance and assistance of Archangel Michael for protection and to clear away lower energies as well as Archangel Ra Raziel to tune into divine magic and alchemy. Okay, and then our last stone of choice here is this beautiful rhodonite, a little bit different than rhodochrosite. Rhodochrosite is a pink stone, almost the same color as rhodonite, but usually has uh, pink, or excuse me, white in it. Sometimes it's just pink. The rhodonite usually has some of the black in it, as you see here, but still a lot of pink going on there. So this is wrapped in silver, and it's infused with the vibration of the number two, the number of love, compassion, and relationships. The energies of cancer, the sign of loving connections with others and peaceful and balanced emotions. The opening and balancing of the heart chakra for self-love, love towards others, friendship and romance. And with the energies of Archangel Raphael to heal old heart chakra wounds 
and along with Archangel Shamuel to assist in attracting our soulmate and or healing any current soulmate relationships. Okay, so again, our stones of choice are, we have that golden yellow and green moss agate. We've got the abalone shell. And we've got the rhodonite. Okay, so if you like these special intention pendants and you want to see any others that I might have wrapped, please make sure to go onto my website. They're all listed there. So let's talk a little bit about the astrology of this week, the 24th through the 30th. Okay. A lot of Capricorn energies going on. Now, the sun just went into Aquarius as of last Wednesday. But on Monday, the 20th of this week, we have Mars, the warrior, the planet of energy, action, and forward movement, moving into Capricorn. So leaving Sagittarius behind. I think Mars is a fire planet, and it wasn't a fire sign Sagittarius. So... He was at home there, but I will say the energies for those few weeks were a little bit chaotic and sometimes overwhelming with all that fire energy. Now, Capricorn is going to help to ground the warrior a little bit. Now, it will it might slow down some of the forward movement towards goals, but it gives it more grounding power, focus power, ability to kind of move step by step and help to manifest some of those goals. So it's very productive. Mars will be very productive in moving through Capricorn, which by the way, it's going to be in Capricorn until March 6th. So over a month, you know, a pretty good long time for us to put our energy towards Capricorn energies. And again, Capricorn rules our career path, life path, destiny path, goals, ambitions, our sense of inner authority uh, also is indicated here where Mars is putting its energy towards you, kind of owning that inner authority and being the leader and the manager and, and taking charge of your life. On Tuesday, the 20, what is that? <laughs> I think I said Monday, the 20th for Mars moving into Capricorn. It was actually Monday, the 24th. So I'm sure some of you caught that. Monday, the 24th, Mars is in Capricorn. Tuesday, the 25th, Mercury is moving back into Capricorn. Now, Mercury, as you probably know, is retrograde. It went retrograde at 10 degrees of Aquarius. It's retrograding now on Tuesday the 25th back into Capricorn for a few days. It's actually going to be retrograde until February 3rd, and then it will turn direct in Capricorn, and then it will not move out of Capricorn until February 14th, Valentine's Day. Isn't that interesting? Valentine's Day is when Mercury will move back into Aquarius, trying to finish up the last few days of his shadow period as he pa tries to pass that 10 degree Aquarius mark where he first went retrograde. But we're going to feel that shift because Mercury rules our mind, our thoughts, our ideas, our perceptions, how we communicate both with ourselves and with others. It rules messages and information. And while it was in Aquarius, as you know, Aquarius ruling technology and whatnot, the Mercury retrograde when it was first creeping up on us was a little bit interesting. A lot of uh, electrical and computer-based, uh, technology-based things going a little haywire, communications with other people, wires were crossed, uh, miscommunication, etc., etc. Now, it's moving back into Capricorn. Again, Capricorn gives a little bit of grounding, a little bit of practicality, a little bit of focus. The focus will also shift to business matters, career matters, projects that we're working on, collaborating maybe with other people on those projects. It's a great time with Mercury Retrograde to continue to co-create something that's already been in motion before Mercury went retrograde. So if you're doing that, it's going to go really well. If you're working on business, website, career stuff, it's going to go really well. Um, it is still retrograde though. So there still might be some miscommunication. There might be a need to clarify things, reiterate things, go over things, do something over, uh, et cetera. But again, that shift from kind of electrical high-strung Aquarius back into 
grounding earth sign Capricorn, uh, you'll probably feel that shift or around or on the 25th. And then we're going to skip to Friday the 28th. Friday the 28th, Mercury, still retrograde in Capricorn, is going to come together with Pluto, the planet of death and rebirth, power and control, transformation, regeneration, uh, transmutation. So this is about words of power or communications of power or thoughts of power. So in other words, we need to think more in an empowered way. We need to perceive our reality and situations that we are in in a more empowered way. If we're communicating with other people, we might have some disempowering connections or situations or um, conversations with other people. It's about taking our power back. And it, it would be a little difficult maybe not to try to overcompensate by being overly um, what do I want to say? I don't want to say aggressive, but overly kind of just really kind of powerful back. And it's good to be powerful and create a boundary, a verbal boundary or, or what have you, or state your truth. Um, but you have to watch that powerful Plutonian energy. It's also a great time, especially with Mercury retrograde. When a planet is retrograde, it internalizes whatever the energy of that planet is about. And since Mercury rules the mental realm, it's allowing us to internalize our mental processes, to do more self-reflection and contemplation and thinking about things. And in Capricorn, a little bit maybe better able to do that in a grounded way than it was when it was in Aquarius. But as it comes together with Pluto, Pluto rules the subconscious realms. It rules what's hidden beneath the surface of things. And so for ourselves, we can really become more aware of some subconscious patterns that we might be operating through. We also might be able to perceive better other people's motivations for why they're communicating in a certain way or why they're taking certain actions. So it really helps us to have a, a better understanding of personalities all the way around. On Saturday the 29th, Venus is turning back to direct motion and She's in Capricorn too. So Venus will turn direct at 11 degrees of Capricorn. Venus is a, a feminine planet, right? She rules feminine relationships, our power of attraction, receptivity, love, beauty. She does rule finances and money as well. And turning direct in the sign of Capricorn, which is about, again, business, career, life path, destiny path, our own sense of authority, take charge, managerial ability. So the divine feminine feels clearer and stronger now that she's turning direct. I feel like when she was retrograde the last few weeks, it was bringing up issues of self-worthiness, um, owning our inner authority, feeling as a woman, um, or owning our, our feminine energies in such a way that our feelings were hmm, feeling like we weren't being respected maybe, or that uh, there was some insecurities with who we are as a, as a person, as a female, or even out in the business world. So now that she's going direct, I feel like she's going to be stronger and more confident and more empowered, more take charge now that she's moving forward again. And then on Sunday, the 30th, we're going to have the last uh, astrological transit, which actually doesn't involve any Capricorn energies. It involves the sun in Aquarius. So on the 30th, the sun in Aquarius is in a challenging connection to Uranus in Taurus. Now, Uranus is about freedom and liberation and change and uh, redirection. It's known as the great awakener. So we might have an aha moment or an epiphany. Uh, something huge might uh, change where we're freeing ourselves from something, especially with the sun in Aquarius, because Aquarius rules independence and freedom as well. So we're really going to have that itch to free ourselves or liberate ourselves, whether it's from a situation, a relationship, a pattern, a thought process. Um, and we just want to be more independent. You know, we want to uh, move forward and awaken ourselves to a higher reality, basically. And so that's how we end our week.
So let's go ahead and take a look at the messages from our angels and guides. I'm going to stay on camera here with this one this week. So the first card that I pulled, of course, I shuffled and meditate. And as you all know, I usually wait for cards to kind of flip out, fall out or whatnot. And the first card that flipped out, and I did see this one because it flipped out onto the floor upright, is the solar plexus chakra. Okay, so this makes a lot of sense because of all the Capricorn energy that we have going on. And Capricorn is, again, the authority. Capricorn energies, it's very um, grounded, focused, in control, a sense of willpower, a sense of, uh, again, focusing on the steps, and they don't mind the hard work to get to the steps. They're very good at being managers, leaders, supervisors. All of this is solar plexus chakra energy. And especially on Friday when Mercury, the ruler of the mental realm, comes together with Pluto, planet of power and control and owning, you know, being empowered and owning your power and transforming your life and just really uh, going through this um, transformational sort of process. It's no wonder that this solar plexus card came out. So this is about, you know, getting in tune with your confidence, your courage, your willpower, your Again, take charge ability, your own inner authority. So that seems to be a theme for the week since this was the first card that came out. And again, this might bring up some issues or situations regarding disempowerment. Are you being disempowered by another person? Is a situation or circumstance that you're in, like your job or family situation, is that disempowering you? Are you disempowering yourself? with a thought, a belief system, a way of looking at or perceiving something in your life or the way you look at or perceive yourself. I know a lot of that's going on lately. So um, this is about, again, taking back your power. Let's look at the next card that came out, the second card. Okay, the second card. Okay, we have the seven of mental. This is the blue cards are the cards of the mental realm, which is like the sword suit. This is like the seven of swords. The number seven numerologically um, is a number where sometimes we get a little bit confused. The number seven sometimes brings in some confusion or illusion. And you can see that this person actually has a mask. Now he's not wearing the mask. It's actually he's in the process of lifting up that mask and taking that mask off. And it says at the bottom deception and envy. So there could be some deceptive energies going on. Mercury is retrograde. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a conscious deception by someone else. This could be just the energies that are not clear. You know, things are not clear. Things are a little fuzzy. Things are a little confusing. It's Mercury retrograde. Um, it could just be what's happening situationally. It could be conversations and connections with other people, interactions with other people. So just watch for people not being on the up and up or people not being truthful or people not being honest or people leaving out certain pieces of information. Again, this can just be within your own self, your own mind, your own thought processes your own way of perceiving something to where you're not seeing the truth of the matter. You're not seeing things clearly. And this is part of that taking the mask off right now. It's like we need to take the mask off to see what we need to see, to hear what's not being said maybe. Um, the number seven is a very spiritual number and it can be highly intuitive, usually in the manner of using high discernment, like reading between the lines or watching somebody's body language and knowing that what they're saying isn't matching the body language. So again, it's highly attuned to some of that uh, ability to discriminate what is correct or what is not correct. The number seven is um, a mental number, but it's also an emotional number and a spiritual number all wrapped up in one. So you might have a lot of these energies going on again on the mental realm where you're analyzing you're being really logical you're trying to make sense of something and again maybe it's not making any sense because of the confusion you might be feeling a little bit emotional so you got the uh, emotional and the confusion the mental realm and the emotional realm that's a little out of balance 
but that highest form of the spiritual for the number seven, right? This is where we can really, again, if we reflect and we contemplate and we meditate and we really think about what's really happening and why and what's the purpose and what am I supposed to learn? This is where that mask of the illusion can come off and what seems deceptive or confusing can start to clear up. And things will become more clear too after Mercury turns back to direct motion on February 3rd, which is gonna be part of next week's reading, but we'll see then what the angels and guides have to say. The last card for this week the last card for this week is a great one. It's Major Arcana 1, and in this deck it's called Awareness. Now, a lot of you probably realize this is the Magician card in the traditional tarot. So the Magician, your thoughts create your own reality. That's part of, of this, right? Choose to focus your intentions and your thoughts on the positive. See the good in people. See the good in yourself, right? Take off the mask of illusion. So see the good in your situation. Use that power of your own mind, the power of visualization, the power of intention to kind of shift um, what's going on in your life for you so that you can come back into your sense of power and take your power back. This uh, magician has an open crown chakra, right? Crown chakra is lit up. We got the circle from the crown chakra. Even the third eye chakra is involved here up um, through the universe. So our ability to channel information is heightened. Our ability to see clairvoyantly information is heightened. Um, that crown chakra is the clear cognizance. So we just have a knowingness of certain things or that's part of the channeling. We just know something to be true. And this is using your gifts, talents, and abilities in a magical way to manifest your reality like the magician does, right? But a lot of it with this card is, again, having a higher awareness of what's taking place, what's going on, what you need to know, what you need to shift, what you need to understand uh, about yourself, about other people that might be in your life, about situations that you might be in. What's the spiritual purpose of everything that's happening right now? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at your special message card, depending on your stone of choice. All right, everybody. So for those of you that chose the golden yellow and green agate, okay? Golden yellow, green moss agate. What archangel has a message for you this week? What's the message for the golden, yellow, and green moss agate people? Okay, when I open my eyes, this one's kind of popping out at me. Ooh, yeah, we were just talking about claircognizance with the magician, right? Claircognizance, this is Archangel Uriel. It says, pay attention to thoughts and ideas that come to you as they are answered prayers. Pay attention to thoughts and ideas that come to you because they are answered prayers. So again, that clear cognizance, Uriel. Um, I often do think of Uriel as being that archangel that gives us that kind of epiphany, that aha moment, the, the flash of insight. It usually comes in quick and fast with Uriel, sort of like a lightning bolt, you know, sort of like uh, Aquarius or Uranus energy. Um, and that's, you know, we have the, the sun squaring Uranus at the end of the week. That might be when you have this epiphany, when you have this aha moment. So there's uh, some sort of clarity that comes in. And I have to think that it's going to be positive for you. I mean, look at that nice little rainbow here. Um, you got the clouds that are parting. The rainbow is happening. Archangel Uriel's standing at the top of the mountain. It's almost like you're going to be able to reach greater heights. You're going to have higher awareness and reach greater heights. And you've got this potential for prosperity and abundance and blessings. So listen to whatever the idea is, the flash of insight, and follow up on that. Follow up on what it is that you're given psychically through that crown chakra, that clear cognizance ability. Okay, perfect. Love it. All right. 
you know what? I just heard, put it back in the deck. I don't know if we're gonna get it again, but I feel like, you know what? Other, other people should have a chance of getting that one too, right? So we're gonna put that back in the deck. And now the next special message card is for the abalone shell, people. Abalone shell. All right, so the special message for the week for the abalone shell, people. Okay, this one's calling my attention as I open my eyes. This one is indigo and crystal children. Indigo and crystal children. Now, this could be about an indigo or crystal child that's in your life. And a lot of these children are now of adult age. So you could be an adult. Maybe you have an adult indigo or crystal child. They're an adult. Um, or this can be about an actual young child. This could also be about you being an indigo or a crystal, that there's something to pay attention attention to as far as your own indigo traits or your own crystal traits. And this is with Archangel Metatron, okay? Archangel Metatron sort of has, I don't know if I wanna use the word domain, but he's the one that kind of watches over and guides the crystal and indigo children. So it says, you have a bond with children. It says, in particularly, you can help children who are sensitive. So again, whether this is actually you working with children, maybe your job or profession involves working with or helping children, maybe um, you're in a situation where the neighborhood kids, you're helping them, or a sister or another family member or a friend's kids, you're helping them. Or again, maybe this is just about you and those qualities of indigo or crystal within you. So the indigo children are usually the way showers, the leaders, the ones that uh, buck authority. They don't like being told what to do. They kind of beat to the beat of their own drum. They're the ones that are gonna kind of forge the path ahead. They're, they're, uh, they're trying to make changes out there in the world as far as, you know, like in, in government and in positions of authority. Because they don't like authority, they usually don't like authority because authority usually tells people what to do, but it has no basis you know, like in reality, except for a power and control game. So in that whole thing, they have an authority, but it's to change the world, to help the planet, to shift the paradigm into something that's going to work better. The crystal children, they're usually, their energy is usually softer, they're healers, they're artists, they're creatives, they're counselors. You know, that's kind of the crystal energy um, mentality, so to speak. So again, oh, and by the way, we can be both. We can have a little bit of indigo in us and we can have a little bit of uh, crystal energy in, a, in us as well as adults. So there, there is definitely some crossover there. But maybe this is talking about you and to bring out those qualities. Maybe there's a, a need for you to buck the system and be an authority and take charge and make a change in a system or in a job, maybe you're needing to hone some of those more intuitive and creative and healing abilities within yourself. The ones that the crystal children often have like the open heart chakras. And it's not that an indigo doesn't have a loving open heart chakra, but the crystals just are usually, you know, the ones emanating the unconditional love and compassion and forgiveness and healing, you know, all the time and through what they're doing. So maybe you're needing to bring those qualities out a little bit because of a particular situation. Again, whether it's working with a child or children or whether it's dealing with your own inner child in some way or bringing out that indigo or crystal energy, this is the message for you this week. All right, let's put that back in the deck. And then for those of you that chose the rhodonite, okay? So rhodonite, people. Let's give this a little shuffle. And special message for rhodonite. Okay, I open my eyes and if nothing's jumping out at me, I'm gonna just continue to shuffle. Rhodonite, people. Special message, okay, that one definitely was highlighted when I opened my eyes this time. Another Archangel Uriel, but a different one. You know what to do. You know what to do with Archangel Uriel. So he's definitely uh, 
with us this week. It says, trust your inner knowledge and act upon it without delay. Trust your inner knowledge and act upon it without delay. You know what to do. So somewhere in there, you might have a question. You might be trying to make a decision. What do I do next? What decision do I make? This card is actually saying you already kind of know the answer. You just want some sort of confirmation that your answer is correct. First of all, know that there's not really any right or wrong answers, right? There's always learning. Sometimes we take a particular path and we learn something and then we redirect ourselves and, and go down the other path. So, you know, it's, it's nothing's like set in stone to the point where you can't make a different decision. But this is to me, it's highlighting something. Again, Archangel Uriel is that open crown chakra and that just flash of insight or I know what to do. I know what the, the next step is. I know what the decision is. So there's something that's being highlighted with this lantern. Okay. So let's say you're vacillating between two different possibilities or potentials. If you close your eyes and you focus on one, and then you sit there for a few seconds and then you continue to shift your focus to focus on the other one, which one is highlighted? And that could be literally like that it glows. That would be like you with your clairvoyant ability. Which one, if you're more clairaudient, which one do you hear when you focus on your angels and guides saying this one, this one, this one, you know, that would be a clairaudient psychic message. Uh, claircognizance, which is what Uriel kind of, what his domain is, you're focusing on both of them and you just kind of have this flash of knowing this, a really quick instant of, you know what, that's the one, that's the decision, that's the way to go. Um, and of course, the last one is your clairsentience, where you just feel like this one feels more right. This one feels like the right thing to do. Interesting that I'm bringing up all the clairs here and how you can kind of intuit which which one is right for you. Um, I'm going to have a little little uh, addendum here at the end of our video about uh, my psychic clairs class, so stay tuned for that. But this message is saying that um, again, you already know the answer, and if you feel like no, I don't, no, I don't know the answer, then just kind of sit with yourself and ask the question and then let the message come to you through a feeling, through uh, a, you know, an audible message, or through this, again, this epiphany or flash of insight with uh, Uriel. Okay, something will be highlighted for you. All right, everyone, I think that's it. Those are all the messages for the different stones. Um, as I mentioned, I am going to have a Claire's workshop on January 29th, Saturday, Saturday, January 29th. And whether you can come in person, it's a Zoom class online, or whether you'd like to take it in a pre-recorded way, meaning for those of you that can come live, we will do the class uh, on Saturday, January 29th from 12 to 4 p.m. Eastern time. And if that doesn't work for some of you, because I know there's different, uh, you know, places in the world, obviously, that some of you might even be sleeping or that, you know, that day and time just doesn't work, you can take it by just getting the link when it's done. It will be recorded. Um, and whether or not you take it live or you don't take it live, I will email the link once we're all done and through. And that way you have it to watch again. You can download it, save it on your computer. But the Psychic Claire's class workshop, it's four hours long, so it's introductory. It's not, you know, delving deeply, deeply into everything, but we're going to cover all the Claire's, the clairvoyance, the clairaudience, the clairsentience, the claircognizance are the main ones that we're going to look at. We're going to describe what they are. How can you um, know whether or not that's your strong one? Because usually we're stronger in one or two than the rest of them. And then we're going to have some exercises, doing some exercises with how do you strengthen that particular Claire. We might talk a little bit about psychic protection in the beginning. Um, and, you know, we'll just see where it goes. And, of course, if you're live on the, on the Zoom workshop, you can ask questions and interact. 
So if you have any questions, make sure that you contact me, Colleen at sacredsoulempowerment.com with your questions or look at the full description on my website and see if that's something that you resonate with and you think is interesting. I'd love to see you there. So sending you all lots of love and light this week as we close out the month of January and looking forward to seeing all of you or at least connecting with all of you energetically in the month of February here pretty soon. Love and light, everyone. Blessings.